absolutely. Just finishing the uh, sound checks here, but in full flow, they say the Edinburgh Festival is the biggest of its kind in the world. But of course, uh, we're not in full flow. We're missing foreign tourists, we're missing big chunks of audience, we're missing thousands of uh, performers, but you do still feel that Edinburgh buzz around the city. Now, all this was planned, of course, when the COVID situation was rather different. Uh, so this year at Edinburgh, we won't just get improv on stage, but some of the stages themselves have been improvised. So we're going to see a musical here shortly, and we're on top of a multi-storey car park, albeit uh, at the foot of Edinburgh Castle. So nowhere near a normal year, but nobody seems to care. The fun, the flamboyance. The theatrical. The festivals are back in Edinburgh, albeit with fewer performers and thinner crowds. I'm really glad there isn't a million people here because we're still trying to get well. And everybody's got a smile on their face. And so far, there's some love in the air. All the locals come up and go, oh, we can spread our arms. Look at this, it's the fringe. When could I ever ride a penny farthing down the Royal Mile during a fringe, except for this year? Where have you come from? Uh, Bournemouth. Bournemouth. You can't get much further south than that, can you? And what's brought you here? Uh, do, so, do you know what? It's been on my bucket list for ages, and it was a birthday present that's just carried on from when we couldn't come last year. So it's our first one. Everyone keeps going, scale back, scale back. We've got nothing to compare it to, so loving it. But this year, the festival fringe has been trimmed hundreds rather than thousands of acts, including comic Eleanor Conway. Hello, you lovely lot. It's so good to be back. Financially, I think it's been very difficult for a lot of us. We didn't really get the help that we needed to get, but we're here and, you know, we're like little cockroaches. We're, res we're resilient. They are, though, only half filling these indoor venues at the Fringe until Monday, when most restrictions are scrapped in Scotland. The, the sort of back and forth that you get from comic to audience, can you just sort of click back into that? I don't know. You haven't done it yet? <laughs> no, I don't know. I've not, I've not done it yet. I think it's like a muscle. I think it'll be, I think it'll be awesome. I think I'll just be really happy again. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't care if it was three people in a room at this point, you know. From three people in a room to 700 in a tent. Over at the Edinburgh International Festival, they planned for the worst-case scenario, building concert-sized, COVID-safe venues across the city from scratch, providing much-needed work for all those behind the scenes. It's 100 metres long. It's obviously got this extraordinary height, and it's on locations that we would never normally use. They're using just a fraction of the 3,000 capacity here for tonight's opening orchestral performance, and the sides will be open even with storms forecast. I think what we need to remember is that in Scotland, we really haven't had any performances yet, unlike England. So we needed to create something that the public could be really comfortable with, but more importantly, that we could be sure, regardless of kind of what level we're on, we wouldn't get canceled. There are fewer overseas performers this year. That's meant opportunities for Scottish acts, like folk innovators Talisk. That first note that you played when you made your comeback a couple of weeks ago, yeah. what, what, what was it like? I was just like, I really hope I'm pressing the right button. <laughs> but honestly, it was, just, it was brilliant. It does, it does feel like, I mean, like playing music is quite euphoric and you do get such a buzz and you have been waiting for that. And it was like, this feels perfect. What do you think it means for Scotland to have the Edinburgh Festival returning with live performers and live audiences? I think it's a massive statement of just, we can do this, so we will do this. Because a lot of, a lot of events around like the same sort of time have been having to cancel because it's, I mean, it's quite a financial uh, hit to put on a festival. So you have to be really confident. So it is like, nice to know that Edinburgh are like, we're going to make this happen and we're going to take a massive risk. And if it pays off, it was worth it. And, I mean, it has. So Edinburgh's world-famous festivals are emerging, like the rest of us, from the COVID darkness. Not quite as before, but relieved it's happening at all. Uh, Amazing. <laughs>